Okay, the first game is gonna be between Mordor and Rohan on the map Forts of Isen. Magneto, also known as Gavin, gets to play the Mordor faction. And Balinduru will play the Rohan faction. The format we are using for this tournament is, uh, you know, reverse matchup. Just to see the current balance of the game. And also to figure out if it's about the faction in the matchup or if it's about the player. So I like this format a lot. We will have double Orc pit opening for Mordor player Magneto. And his opponent is picking Rohan, Hobbit, Mary has been recruited. And also two fast extra peasants. That means the steeple is going to be too late. So now with the double Orc pit technology, you should be easily able to counter the, uh, the peasant spam from your opponent. But here, what will make this push more stronger is of course the Mary. You know? He's going to add a lot of DPS to the table. When a Hobbit hits level 2, you will also be able to one-shot the Orc Warriors. So trying to get him to level 2 would be actually a great win condition. Welcome everybody to the stream. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Against Rohan, you don't need to pick land. You can always go for the, for the Eye of Sauron without any hesitation. And there comes the Peasant Army. So he's waiting for the Hobbit to arrive, but also that will kind of favor the Mordor player. He will get two more Orc Warriors upon the field. As yes, they are coming, it's going to be a 4v2 situation now. Thank you very much for the resub, my friend. Appreciate the spot for three months. Adrelino96 just resubscribed for three months. Ahoy. Thank you for the streams. I love it. Thank you very much for watching and for the spot, man. Really means a lot. Thank you, thank you. So the Hobbit wasn't able to do a lot besides dodging the Orc Warriors. It's a very good move to always keep an Orc on the Hobbit. Deny his movement, and I will also deny him from getting cloaked. The, Hob the Hobbit is fast, but the Gollum is faster. So as long as the Gollum keeps chasing him down, he cannot cloak. He needs to press S move, S move. But he's already super low. I think I is going to be gone very, very soon. He might be able to get cloaked. Beautiful. Okay, also Eye of Sauron is on cooldown. That means the Hobbit won't be revealed anytime soon. But the push, the early push from Rohan was defended ultra easily from the mother player. And he's even going to go for a counter push. With these two orc warriors coming from the middle area. If a stable, not even yet. Uh, Rohan, I don't know how many extra peasants he spammed. But the thing, the opening he made was super um, delete stable. Remember, he went for the Hobbit, with the Hobbit forward. That means with the two farms, he went for two extra peasants. And then he needed to wait for the extra peasants to arrive before he could capture this settlement and this settlement. And the, that's the reason why he's having such a late stable. And even though with the more like offensive opening from the model player, Gavin, he should be in a perfect spot. He didn't lose any of the Lumber Mills. He has now two Orc Pits and a Radrim Palace. With that, he should be able to creep a lot and get even a higher advantage to get to unlock his industry super fast from his spellbook. And also the colors are not matching with the scoreboard. I will be fixing this for the, for the game number two. So, this one is going to be defended by the peasants, no problemo. One peasant was able to sneak through. Mordor has no vision around uh, from this peasant, peasant. So, if he can actually sneak in to this spot here on the slaughterhouse, it would be amazing. Because it's the only slaughterhouse in the base of Mordor is for now. But the Radrims need to be moving out first. Okay, this creep is also going to be taken easily from Mordor. Maybe he's surprised about the super delete stable, but that's what the punishment is, you know, when you go for this offensive, like super aggressive opening as Rohan, it's great when it works out, but if it doesn't work out, the punishment is going to be also great, as you can see in this game number one. So Mordor having a phenomenal start, which will be super difficult for Rohan to punish him now. And he has almost two power points collected, but, for, but before you can go for the industry, you need to pick your land first. And Mordor seems to be ultra strong now. And also this creep seems to be uncontested. The Rohirrim warriors have to... Oh my god. The Rohirrim warriors have to be careful. You know, you don't want to give Mordor the chance to creep even more. It's a very unlike, unlike a situation. That's going to be the creep number 3 for Mordor against Rohan. This matchup was known to be the toughest matchup actually on 1.06. When you play as Mordor against Rohan. It was ultra difficult to win this matchup. But Gavin will make it work. It looks like it, unless we will see a big throw. The Rohirrim are super badly damaged. I, I don't think they can do anything about the situation. And they will be forced to retreat. 
So, he has almost the power points for this industry. It looks like you want to go for the creep number four. The double orc pit technology, I like it actually. It adds so much more early game presence to a faction that is usually weak at the beginning of the game and ultra strong in the lead game. We have seen a couple of examples about how to play this matchup when you realize as Rohan that you can't win this game fast. You need to go for the lead game technology yourself, which would be Eoma and Eowyn, for example. Both the spear heroes, you can uh, lurk around the map, kill some orcs, get free experience, and try to get your Eoma to level 4 to unlock his horse lord leadership. For now, the Rohirrim are trying to trample orcs. You know, it's not super rewarding. He was not even able to get a whole power point yet from the beginning of the game until now. And zero creeps taken so far. There was the creep number four for Mordor. Two creeps at the bottom and two creeps at the middle. I mean, this one too. And now he's going for the creep at the top. And the only remaining creep after this one is going to be the creep at the top right side. Which will not be enough for Rohan, you know. Rohan is a faction that's relying on the map control. But so far there was zero punishment for the Mordor. And when, what I mean by that is, this Lumber Mill has not been destroyed a single time until now. It's even level 2. It sh and, you know, that should be not allowed. Um, Mordor usually shouldn't be able to get level 2 Lumber Mills in this matchup on a map like Fort of Eisen, which is quite small. What's up, Rainbow? Welcome to the stream, my friend. If even soldiers have run up on the field, as a counter to the Rohirrim Warriors, and I like the Isengard pikemen, they are also not ultra weak against peasants. And the peasants will fall. So, what is the plan of the Rohan player? That's the big question. He has not much. He has a level 2 stable. That means he has recruited 4 Rohirrim in total. One of them was almost getting killed. With... Um, I think he lost some Rohirrim. At least he lost one. From what I can see. I see one here, one returning to the base, and one being in the base. That means one of the Rohirrim has been killed before. So level 2, he didn't go for the, for the shields, did he? No, actually he didn't. And this is not good, by the way, you know? Your armory will not be able to sync up with the speed of the Mordor economy. And by the time you get your armory, your Mordor opponent will have an Asgul upon the field. And you have legit no counter to this. So when you don't see any trolls... At this point of the time, you need to know that your opponent is going for a fast Nazgul. And given the giving the extremely great start into this game, you need to expect it very, very soon. So you need to be prepared for this, you know? How you be how you're gonna be prepared for this? Elvin and Elma are a great choice to begin with. And then maybe even Legolas, you know? Ooh boy. He was able to stop him at least, you know. Be careful with the Rohirrim warriors. We have runes. Also, Gimli could be a nice choice. Gimli actually gives you resistances to fear with level 2. And it's super easy to get him to level 2 because he's faster than the rune soldiers. So you can run them down. The vestition will be chosen and picked. That's what Gavin likes to do to get the money a bit faster. Now he's at around 5k. What you can always do as Mordor is you can go for a Nazgul. And when you feel like you are in a safe spot, you can cancel him just before he comes out to go for the Witch King. Because the thing with the Nazgul is he gives you more, you know, momentum through, but you will still need a Witch King later on. So it will slow you down a bit, you know? So when you go for a straight Witch King though, like directly to the Witch King, you can just skip the Nazgul and go for a Troll Kitchen and stuff like this. But he wanted to go for the Nazgul, there he comes, the flying creature with no counter. I mean, obviously, you can go for the Elvin. Elvin will be able to chunk the Nazgul big time, but he, she can't one-shot him, you know? Ooh, son! I, I, I really thought he killed the whole battalion with one single attack, but it was actually two required, but it's, it's still amazing. And as you can see, the Nazgul already adding lots of uh, pressure on Rohan and might Result the game in a, in a fast GG. So he's demolishing the armory. Eowyn will be recruited. But again, the amount of time Rohan now needs. Like, you need to get three archers from the archer range. You need to go for uh, fire arrows. Then you need to rebuild your stable. You need Theodin, which he has, okay? 
But then you need to recruit Rohirrim Archer. Give them all of them banner, heavy armor, and fire arrows. And be, until this is gonna happen, you will have zero map control. And Mordor will have a Witch King upon your field, and potentially even more than that. So look at the minimap. One look at the minimap should tell you a whole story. But remember, you know, it's a back and forth matchup. We will get to see the same matchup for the second time in a swapped version. In the game number two, Gavin is gonna play on this spot, Rohan, and Balinduri is gonna play on this spot, the Mordor faction. And then Asgul is doing a phenomenal job. Erwin Spear, still not reloaded. It's a minute cooldown, so you need to be patient. 2.5k, but full map control, the money is going to kick in super fast. But it's a tournament game. We have only single elimination. We have only one chance, one shot, one opportunity, you know? So you don't want to give up. But at this point, like when you find yourself in a situation like this, it's not about you anymore. It's not about how well you play from this point on. It's about the mistakes your opponent will make, which you hope he will make. Because even if you play a perfect game from this spot on, the win chances, the win ratio of yours is going to be super low. And you need your opponent to make a mistake. Like, for example, lose the Nazgul in a very random way. In an ideal situation in which also Theoden can share experience and get somehow to level 4 or something. Now the Nazgul is flying in circles. And Eowyn can't hit him. Now she needs to re-coordinate. I like this, actually. It's like a cinematic show. <laughs> He's playing with her. 6k for Mordor. The decision is going to be available in the next 10 seconds. It means a very early Witch King too. And then you can go for the Outpost at the top. Go for the Mumma Kill Pan. Go for the Troll Cage. If you want to, so you can go for the, for the Siege Forks too. Which it really doesn't need. At this point of the time. Fire Rose just coming in. But again, you see when you don't go for the late game technology with Mo Rohan. You will fall behind super, diff uh, super hard. So I think... The best call would be to go Eoma, Eowyn, the combination. Then you can lurk around, even fight the rune soldiers. Spear throw them at least, you know. Get experience over and over again. He went for the Grand Harvest on his farms to compensate the map control uh, difficulty he currently has. But again, he doesn't have any Rohirrim archers. He has only barely some of this Yeoman archer upon the wall, you know. These pleb units without any leadership. And no fire arrows because he can't afford it. He's ultra broke. And we hear the Witch King. So, who is not broke in this game is definitely the model player with the pink Witch King. Now he's coming. So, now going for the outpost, going for the triple furnace technology here. And I think he wanna go for another Nazgo before he wanna make anything crazy, you know? Maybe he can afford it. And if he goes for the third Nazgo super fast. I think all he needs, uh, like you can kill the Eowyn super fast with the Witch King and the Nazgul, you know? Yeah. Eoma, Eoma's spear doesn't hurt the Witch King. Witch King is super resistant against those kind of uh, abilities. The only ability that will chunk him and burst him is the smile from Eowyn. That's gonna get him super low though, but you know, he's still healthy. But you should try to kill the Nazgul here, in my opinion. Not the Witch King. But Witch King doesn't even need to be afraid because the Citadel is shooting now. That's a change we made a, a few weeks ago. So the Citadel is going to be shooting over and over again. And there comes the Elven Summon, I mean, which Witch King can easily dodge, you know. The weather has been destroyed and the Nazguls are kind of bullying. Spear throw won't hurt. And then Asgul is gonna get in safety. 3.6k going full eco mode. Bunch of level 2, level 3 structures in the base. And absolute dominance. What in terms of map control? Even controlling the settlement right next to the castle of Rohan. And uh, incredible performance from the model player Gavin in the first game. Yeah, he needs a lot actually, you know, he, you need, like, the thing about this matchup is you need also lots of leadership. You need either Aragorn leadership for more DPS 
if you don't have him you need AOM leadership like it's not about you being able to kill them but you need to burst them you know like when Mordor is the, has reached the ulti, ultimate lead game in which you have like three flying creatures Enough. which you will have now and bunch of trolls chasing you what Mordor can always do is attack you with his Nazgûls and when you stop to deal with the Nazgûls there will be trolls chasing you down so the second you stop attacking to attack the Nazgûls the trolls will smash you if you don't stop the Nazgûls will smash you Send forth the legions. So much death. Leave none alive. What can men do against such reckless hate? <laughs> Poor girl. Does he have heal? Oops. No, he doesn't have heal. Eobin might be in trouble. Eobin will go down, actually. Eobin is no more. And yeah, here's Rohirrim Archer without heavy armor. He has no money, as you can see at the top, at the bottom left side of your screen. He is ultra broke. He has no resistances to fear. And without heavy armor, your army is super vulnerable against Nazgul damage. And each hit will hit and kill multiple units at, at once, you know? Double troll cage, but he never went for any, uh, any trolls. I think he forgot about them. His devastation, he's playing with his food, though. And Balindru is quite brave, he doesn't give up. Again, hoping for the mistake of his opponent. It might sound delusional, but if somehow and somewhat Gavin decides to lose all his Nazgus and the Witch King, and somehow and somewhat Hildin and Elmar are both able to hit level 4 the game could go another direction but realistically speaking it would be a dream now absolute controlling Tell him to concept. Tell him. I'm joking. I'm joking. I mean, still level one. But Tillian is actually getting closer to level four. Now, the Glorious Charge is not giving you that much of a damage boost. It's more like a tankiness thing, kind of thing. You know, you get like slow resistances, which doesn't really help against Trolls that much. Or, or not against Nazgûls. So, in this matchup, I think not. I, I, like, for me personally, Yoma's leadership is much more important. He opened his back on the menu, though. Elma, <gasps> if Elma would get the, the tower, got the kill. If Elma would get the kill there, it would be so good actually for Rohan. He would get low kill level three, maybe even more than that. You know, Elma can level up super fast when he when you kill a expensive hero like Nazgul with your spear throw. You should be in a good spot. <laughs> okay, he's finally starting to make some trolls. We will have in total 8 trolls and potentially 2 drama trolls and also he has enough power points for his darkness. So these trolls will be legit Aragorns with Anduri Sword and Bleed Master combination. Almost level 4. So when somebody is asking you what is the definition of playing with your foot, you can show him this game actually, you know? That's low-key the definition of playing with your foot. Enjoying your meal. What is Eowyn doing there, you know? My, no man can kill me. I am no man. You need Mary, you know? I think... They overestimate the uh, Eowyn because without Mary's help, she would not been able to kill the Witch King there. You know, I mean, it kind of hurts my soul to not see any heavy armor on this army, and kind of unfortunate that Elma is not even level three yet. It would be a, such a, a massive power spike for Rohan. Outlaw leadership would give you so much money. Killing this units over and over again, you would grow rich.
Oh my god, boys. The trolls with the pinky pants. Look at look at this troll. <laughs> New fashion. The most trendy outfit in 2024. Victoria's Secret, you know? I mean, use this ability, by the way. Use this, that's amazing. <laughs> this guy is... Um, he even went for a statue in the base because he's being prepared for what's about to come. But listen, when you fight against trolls, you don't want to be in a choke point, you know? You don't want to be in a small area like this because trolls are dealing hella splash damage. They hit multiple targets in, at once. And you don't want to be in a... In a small area in which trolls will just smash like hulk or even even went for the mumo kills who now has the strength to fight against the forces of mordor you should join with him gandalf you should join with sauron it would be wise my friend oof oof the monsters the monsters are coming. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? I need to disable the... I, I wanna look the cinematic moment. They are coming. They are coming. I forgot to open the bets. I will open for the for the upcoming game. What can I do against such reckless seed? True, true, true. So now, uh, let's see if this army is somehow capable of dealing with this army, which I have highly doubts about. You know, I would delete the citadel here. By the way, I would delete it to have like more. Oh my god! I don't. I don't have a feeling. I don't have a good feeling about this, boys. I don't have a good feeling about this, boys. <laughs> Let's go. Charge! 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 Look at the glow, boys. Holy! You see the Haradrim's glowing? They are like shining, you know? What can the elves do? You know, they don't even hurt this anymore. And he's gonna call it finally. That's gonna be the game number one. The victory goes to Gavin in the Mortal Faction. But in the game number two, we will get to see the same matchup reverse. Just to see if it's about the faction or if it's about the player. So hold on. Don't complain about the Mordor strength. Maybe it's not about the Mordor. Okay, the game number two is about to begin. It's gonna be on the same map. Let's go. But this time, Balindur gets to play the Mordor faction on host, and Magneto, also known as Gavin, gets to play the Rohan faction, which lost in the previous game. I wish the players, of course, best of luck. It's a best of five series, so even if Balindur loses that, he will get the chance to find his redemption in the following games. But of course, losing two games in a row will put you in a bad mood and might kind of affect the way of your, of your playing. Okay, so now, let's see. Mordor against Rohan. The Mordor player, Balindru opening with double orc pit just like his opponent did in the previous game. And Gavin going for double farm up opening. But remember, the beginning of the game for Rohan was kind of poor, like economically not the wisest choice. And Gavin is not gonna do the same thing. He's actually gonna go with only one peasant forward. Because let's, realistically speaking, even if you go with the two peasants forward against Mordor, the chance that you will do any damage with the first wave of peasants is super unlikely, you know? Because he will have the Eye of Sauron, he will have the Hobbit, I mean the Golem. So he should be able to defend himself. I think what you wanna achieve though is a bit more eco based opening. This way you get. Um, your horses, your stable, built up faster. And this way you can kind of deny your opponent from creeping stuff. You can deny him from getting ultra rich, collecting lots of power points. And you need to be the one who's controlling the map. So he's coming with the Hobbit from this location. 
and the peasant is being hidden around the bottom side. Mordor is waiting and looking for the for the sneaky peasants. He was sending one of the orcs forward. That's a bad thing to do against against Rohan because your orc cannot win the one you one fight against peasants. No. Maybe against Gondor, this could be a nice choice because Gondor will have no extra stuff to defend. But you are against a faction that can use these farms to produce more and more peasants. So the orcs just suicided there for no reason. Hobbit is doing a good job, hitting, running, dealing some damage. And the peasant is still being hidden. So that's the vision of uh, Mordor. He has no vision about this peasant just yet. But it's about to be changed very, very soon. I mean, Hobbit is drawing lots of attention though. That's pretty good. It's going to be a super early stable. So indeed, he never went for any extra peasant. And this, look, look the pressure this Hobbit all alone is creating. A bunch of workers, even two orcs were kind of chasing him. And you are wasting so much potential. Never mind, he actually went for one more extra wave of peasants. And he will even be able to get to this settlement. Uh, it's only one orc against two peasants. This settlement is going to be super destroyed, actually. And even though he didn't went for too many uh, extra peasants from the farms, he actually outsmarted his opponent and still took down his settlement. That's pretty good. So Mordor's eco not looking too hot. This farm should be easily defended by this peasant. The first Rohirrim is going to be there very, very soon. And Mordor wasn't able to creep anything yet. And look the damage of the Hobbit. He's still being around there, triggering, dealing good damage. And in all RTS games, I would assume, just like in Bifumi 1, the early game is the most important stage of the game. So if you make too many mistakes at the beginning of the game, your opponent will snowball his lead to a victory. If you play against an experienced player like Gavin Forcher is, a falling behind is a thing that I would not recommend you. And also this creeping is not going to work, by the way. The creeping is not very well done here from Belindru. Couldn't beat both the Vorks to follow him. I don't think he can... I mean, here's a level 2 peasant, uh, Orc. Maybe can do this. Going for offensive creep in the middle. And lucky for him that the Rohirrim couldn't see that happening. So they were not able to intercept this creeping. And oh, look at this. Like, the Hobbit is still kind of alive. And Balindru is using like a whole army to kill the Hobbit, which he can't. And this Lambert Mill has been destroyed. I don't know what happened with the creep. I think Mordor was able to take the creep and the money. And also this creep and the money was taken by Mordor. It looks like he's trying to creep this at the top side, which he should be able to do if the Rohirrim won't arrive there anytime soon. The Hobbit is also giving lots of vision control. And that's a lot of workers actually he's using to chase the Hobbit down. It's over 100 resources you are not working with, you know? This Lambermir is going to go down as well. Mordor's eco not looking too hot. And greedy to not go for a tower there. Hobbit is doing a phenomenal job. And he might even get the chance to destroy the Haradrim Palace, which would be like the worst case scenario for Mordor. He's building towers, but it looks like Gavin, unlike last time, he doesn't want to waste too much time this time. And he's going for a fast W against Mordor. Knowing that Mordor is going to be super weak, super strong in the lead game. Two power points collected for Balindru. But the Haradrim Palace is going down. It means no rune soldiers, no real counter to the Rohirrim warriors. And they're out too. Like, they're out. And all of that because of the Hobbit. Because the Hobbit was able to clear, uh, create vision around the castle of Mordor. Seeing that there was no tower. And the punishment was a big one. So he has to rebuild. I, I think he's going to go for the Troll Cage. But you can see, this game versus the previous game, Mordor in this game has zero map control. And when you have no map control, you have no money to do anything you want to do. Now, because Haradrim Palace has been destroyed, Mordor has to change the plan and go for the Troll Cage. Which also means, without Haradrims, without Rune Soldiers, you have no chance of competing for the map control. You want to take the money with the Orc Warriors! Went for the heal, though. Mordor might be able to take one part of the money he did. Rohan, knowing that Rohan, I mean, Rohan knows that he went for the, for the distraction of the Harader in Paris. So he's not expecting to see any runes anytime soon. And for that reason, he's going for the horseman shields. And for the tankiness against arrows. 
so we should be kind of expecting a beast rush very very soon troll cage just building up but you know you need time for it to build up then you need to recruit a troll at bare minimum because of the heal rohan won't have the power points though for the for the elven summon but there are still some creeps left i think actually not there is only one more creep left which rohan is about to take it's gonna bring him to two power points but he would still miss a whole power point however the money from rohan is looking super nice so what you can do here is you can go for theory in two right you don't need to go for the for the you went for elma actually elma for the for the worst case scenario and also elma elven combination are actually pretty deadly against trolls so you spear troll with elma and spear troll with elvin and you one shot a troll I'm actually i'm not you know it's a very small tournament between the most active players and uh, like for the for the weekend we are starting today and then hopefully until sunday we will be finishing this event and that's gonna be hopefully we will get to see all of the quarterfinal games today so that's gonna be the first series between gavin and palinduru later today we will also see torin versus tunadine the match of the day yama he, okay, he cancelled the horse shields. Okay, he actually cancelled it. He doesn't want to go for it. He went for Eowyn, Eoma combination. Which means the model player can't send out the trolls uh, one by one. Without leadership, they would die. Maybe maybe you can play actually play Mordor. Play Mordor against Omar Mohammed can also happen today. There comes a spear throw from Eoma. Eobin is going ham. Run in circles, never mind. Ah. Maybe we can change this actually in the upcoming patch. That um this is not gonna be a one-shot anymore, you know? That you will leave the troll with like one HP or something. That he has also the chance to heal up. But it's gonna be a GG call from Balindru. And that will be the Mordor Rohan matchup on the map Forts of Eisen in a back and forth situation. Balindru wasn't able to do what Gavin did with the Mordor faction. And Gavin wins the matchup twice in both terms and gets a huge advantage in the best of five. GG well played. The money differential also kind of huge though.